So today I woke up and I said, you know what, I'm going to make a video about something I do quite frequently, but I don't talk about that much, which is using things like um, the SQL Server SMOs. So the, this is the SQL management objects. And in particular, I use things like the SQL client one, so I don't need to load the SQL Server module or other DLLs. And it makes it a bit more portable. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you today. So first off, what we're going to do is go ahead and create uh, some variables that we're going to use in our connection. So that means things like we're going to select the instance, the database and the connection timeout. So just going to populate those ahead of time and including the query I want to run. So in this case, I'm going to select the databases and their creation date. So next up from there, we're going to need to create a new object, in this case the SQL data type, so in this case this is the SQL client and connection. So this is the SQL client, not the SQL server. This is where we deviate a lot from what you'll find online because a lot of this talks about the SQL server objects. I'm going to use the SQL client ones. Now next I need to create a connection. So we have some existing variables such as the instance, the database and the timeout. So we're just going to pass those into our connection string. We're then going to pass our connection string to our open connect object. So this is the previously mentioned um, con object. So we're just saying, okay, for connection string, populate it with our connection string information that we just gave. Um, we're then going to go ahead and open that connection string. So that's fine. This is usually done programmatically. You wouldn't do it manually, but hey, you know, we're doing this step by step. And next up, we're going to do a system data type SQL client command and we're going to pass to it two things object one which is the our query and object two which is the connection string so it knows where to fire that command against so that's now done what we're going to do is then pass the previously mentioned uh, CMD one here which represents our query response into a SQL client SQL data adapter this is basically just a way of storing the responses we're then going to pass that into a system data type set. This is basically uh, telling it to convert from what is the SQL object into a regular PowerShell object so that we can see the output in a normally formatted way. So we're just going to create a new object. And then what we're going to do is take the content of that object and fill it. So we're just going to fill uh, our uh, data databases variable with the content of our previously aforementioned um, SQL adapter. Now if we go check the content what we should see is basically the contents that has been filled from the SQL adapter. So we're going to have a few more things than we're actually interested in, in here. Um, as you can see the format is XML, there's uh, language location, all this kind of stuff. But we're interested in the tables which as we can see is a, an array of system data objects. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down to the tables section and just look at the contents of tables. And in this case, um, we're just going to use it, the array object for one. You don't need this, but as an example. So now we have the response from our SQL query. So our previous statement was get me the create dates and names of databases. So we can do the same here. We're just quickly formatting it. And, and that's the response. So we now have what we wanted from the SQL server via the client agent. So just to do the tidiness factor, we could go ahead and now close the connection. Um, but that's already done. I've already closed the connection. So what we're going to do is let's try a different type. So we're going to use the same principle. So again, opening up a connection, everything exactly the same as the previous with one subtle exception. Instead of going for a query that will respond to us, we're going to go for a query that we don't care about the response. We just want it to execute. So there's a subtle difference here. So instead of using the command and capturing the command, here we're going to use a SQL data uh, SQL command. So we're telling it that we want to execute a command instead of a query in the same previous way that we did. Um, and what we're going to do is kind of specify a different type of object. So we've got our command. Now, previously we built it up with variables like the connect. So in goes the connect. 
that could easily have been a, a bracketed item. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to tell we've got the command text and our command text here is going to be our SQL query, which in this case, again, is um, telling it to create a database called demo2. And now we're going to tell it to execute that command in a execute non query. So we're telling it we don't care about the response. Next up, we're just going to close the connection and we're going to check see what happened for our query. So we've told it we're executing this command. So there should be a demo two now. So if I quickly refresh, there we go. There's demo two created as per expected. And, and this is how you can operate with SQL client objects to manage a SQL server or do basic functions. And the advantage here is you don't need to install anything. This would have worked just as well from a Windows 10 machine.